What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down the difference between first-string quarterbacks and third-string quarterbacks. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a QB and you would like to learn how you can read defenses, check out that very first link in the description below. Where you could get access to 500-plus videos just like this one where we break down different route combinations that will work against specific coverages, how to identify coverages, and how you can be a more successful quarterback by using your mind. We break down every single coverage and we put it into specific playlists. We explain how you guys can learn the information, access the information, the work. So again, check out that very first link in the description below if you'd like to improve your quarterback football IQ. Let's get started with this video. So first difference that I want to discuss between starting quarterbacks and third string backup quarterbacks, guys that don't see a lot of play time. And I don't make this video to discourage the guys that don't play. I want to. I make this video so you guys can see these things that a lot of these starters have in common and apply it to your games, you could get into that starting role eventually if you're maybe in a situation where you are not playing. So this is a big time throw here from Jared Goff. And I want to talk about this because you see this at a lot of levels of quarterback. Quarterbacks who are not afraid to step up into the pocket, step up into pressure, take a hit and deliver a shot. We're going to be talking about these types of things throughout the course of this video and what a lot of starting quarterbacks have in common. So he comes off of this play action Play action fake, guys coming over the middle, outside pressure right here. He's not just a sitting duck. He doesn't step up and drop his eyes looking at the pressure. He feels the pocket. He feels this outside pressure. He steps up and his eyes still are downfield and stepping up knowing that he might be taking a pretty big shot from a D lineman. He doesn't end up taking a shot from a D lineman. And again, you could make the argument like, oh, well, in the NFL, you know, quarterbacks are protected because of the most important, important player on the field. So D linemen aren't allowed to hit him. So there's not as much of a fear there. I'd like to see you try to step up into the pocket when you got a 300 pound guy coming at you trying to take your head off you wouldn't step up in the pocket you would roll out and take off and run you know what i mean and you probably wouldn't in the 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 haters probably wouldn't even take the snap under center. They would probably drop the snap, right? So everybody makes that excuse, but this is an extremely hard thing to do. Step up in the pocket. I stay downfield, stepping right up into some pressure, guys. But that's what starting quarterbacks have in common. They're comfortable in these types of situations. Now, how do you get comfortable in these types of situations, right? Because this is a skill that a lot of people will say that you can't work on, right? It's more of like a reps thing. And I would have to agree with them, right? Like I think, you know, like let's say you're the backup quarterback for your high school team, right? now and you're playing scout team that is the best thing like let's say you're a sophomore and you're sitting behind a senior who's the starter right totally normal totally fine scout team you should be getting these types of reps a lot of pressure stepping up in the pocket maybe throwing while you got a guy in your face you need reps to get better at this type of stuff but you can also make your practice reps when it's not a game situation 11 on 11 realistic for this something that i do with my quarterbacks every time when june rolls around i'll get like you know one of those like foam roller pads and what i'll do is i'll start hitting them. I'll have them work different footwork moves and I'll start hitting them as they throw. I'll start throwing it at their feet and they got to keep their eyes downfield, scan the field and feel this pressure. Guys, all of the best quarterbacks, all the starting quarterbacks feel pressure. They never drop their eyes and see pressure. And you don't know what I mean until you play the actual position. If you have never played quarterback before, you don't necessarily understand this, but you as a quarterback are not reading routes, right? You're reading defenders. Like, so like a certain defender does something like, let's say for example, like you have like a dig right here. This is not the play, play concept, but like, let's say we have like a dig and then we have a deep post. You're reading the safety. If he crashes on the deep post then, or the dig, we throw the deep post, right? So if your eyes drop and you're looking at the pressure, looking at the pressure, and you lose that safety, it's not like you could just look up and find him again. You know how hard that is. You're done. You're going to have to take off and run. But guys who are starting quarterbacks, guys who are comfortable back there in this position, they feel pressure. So I highly recommend you get those scout team reps. I highly recommend that you're working out with your friends. Have them throw like blocking bags at you. Have them throw like footballs at you. Something that forces you to keep your eyes downfield where you have a lot of chaos. Because the quarterback position is one of the most random, chaotic positions and it's very hard to prepare for the exact thing that you will see. But you can work different movements, work on your base, work on your mechanics staying the same while your eyes stay downfield, and you will be more successful. So there's a great example of this from Jared Goff. Guys, you got to understand this is so tough to do. Step up, protect the ball, step right into a defender, and deliver an accurate shot. Guys, that is so, so impressive. You got to understand how hard that is to do that at the level that he's playing at, right? You, the, all 32 NFL stars, they're the 32 best guys in the world. 
and they're all super talented. And if you could just take 5% of their game and add it to your game at the youth or high school level, you will be a better player. So that's what I want you to get out of that video. So now, second thing I want to talk about here. This is Quinn Ewers. Obviously had a great game against Alabama. And one thing that I noticed with this dude is the anticipation that he had on his throws was insane. Like I saw a throw where he threw like it was a concept, like the one we were just talking about where it was a dig and then we had a deep post and it was a too high safety look. And this safety drove on the dig. So he threw the deep post over the top, right? But when he let go of the ball, it wasn't even like the safety had already crashed down. He was like almost reading his body language. So he didn't, and again, you can't do that without a quick release. And by quick release, I don't mean that your arm needs to be crazy fast. I mean that you need to have no wasted motion as a QB. How many of you guys have been taught as a quarterback, like, okay, you drop back, you hold the ball by your chest, but when it's time to throw, you got to bring the ball up by your ear. Or, you know, you got to lift the ball up to your ear. You got to load your front shoulder to the target and telegraph the throw. That is all completely wrong. You will not be able to find a single NFL starter that does that. And that was a mistake that I made when I was a high school quarterback. The way I was taught, because I, again, I was a very coachable athlete. A coach told me to do something, I'm going to go do it because I'm a coachable athlete and I trusted my coaches. And I think a lot of you guys need to also trust your coaches, but it's just, you know, it's on the coaches to give you the proper information, right? So I, my coach would say, okay, you drop back, you hold it by your chest. When it's time to throw, lift that ball up by your ear and throw. And I got very good at that. You can get very good at a bad habit, right? But again, it's not the most efficient way to do it. So when the season rolls around and I got guys coming at me trying to take my head off, I got certain windows. Like let's say I have a play concept where it's a dig and let's say I have like the slot receiver running a whip route. I'm reading the outside backer. Outside backer crashes on the whip. I got to throw the dig, but I have a mic backer right here too. So I got to throw it now. I didn't have time to load the ball up by my freaking ear and get set into my back leg. I just had to throw the dang thing. So that's how you guys have to train. So what, look at Quinn Ewers' release right here. Does he load the ball at all? No, it's just he's just dropping back. The ball is at his chest and he just lets this thing go. So guys, that is how we have to train. When you guys are warming up, when you guys are doing drill work, when you guys are throwing routes versus air, you should never have a load up in your motion. We want to be preloaded. I want to be sitting there in the pocket, weight on my back leg, comfortable with the ball. And usually, again, the season usually corrects this with quarterbacks. I love seeing this with guys that I train. Like, you know, some guys have like little hinges in their motion. And then when they get thrown into the season, they realize, oh, crap, I got to get the ball out of my hands. And it kind of fixes the, pro the problem. You don't want to have to fix a problem when you're in a season. You want to be focused on winning games and performing. So when you guys train, you're doing drill work, you're doing routes versus air, let's just have the ball ready to go. If, th if that's higher than where yours has it, if that's like up here, fine. Just don't change it. Have your base loaded. Be ready to throw at any time. Because I tell you this, guys, you don't want a slow release. A slow release, because and, and it shouldn't be this way, but the quarterback position needs to look a certain way. Like if you're a high school guy and you're getting recruited or you want to get recruited, I'm sorry, but it has to look a certain way. And that's, a mis and again, another mistake that I made. I, I don't even know how I got by because I had a big load up, big hinge in the motion, slow release, and you do not want to be labeled as a guy with a slow release because it makes it very, very tough for you to come back from that. So you have to have these types of things. You've got to be loaded. You got to be, and by loaded, I mean your base is prepared to throw. You know, when you throw, you want to have weight on your back leg. You should have that weight on your back leg when you drop, when you're stepping up, when you're stepping back, doing drill work, loaded 24-7 ball ready to go. So we have no wasted motion and I can just get this ball out of my hands. If you got to pat the ball, I'd rather have a pat. And I don't think a pat is a bad thing either. You look at all NFL starters, they all pat the ball. I don't even think a pat is a bad thing. If that helps you get in rhythm and it gets it out quick, do it. No wasted motion back there. So now another trait that a star, and again, that's, that's, that's what keeps a lot of quarterbacks off the field. It's the whole purpose of this video. You cannot have a slow release and be a starter. It will not work. You guys got to have a fast release. No wasted motion. Your arm doesn't need to be crazy fast like Kyler Murray's arm. Like when you guys see Kyler Murray's arm, you blink and that ball's already out. But it doesn't need to be that. It's just, there's no wasted motion, okay? Now, another trait of a starting quarterback versus, versus a backup quarterback. They know when to hang in there. So let's look at this clip here from Jaden Daniels. Drops back, sitting in the pocket, pressure in his face. Guy's jumping at him. His tackles are getting blown up into him, and he's staying in there and delivers a shot. Guys, this is one of the biggest things that helped me get recruited out of high school was on my film, I stood in there as long as possible and took a lot of hits, and I was very comfortable playing in a phone booth. 
right? You guys have all probably, maybe not, I don't know, but like you guys have probably seen like phone booths before where you step in there, it's pay phone, right? You know how tight it is in there. That's what they call this, playing in a phone booth. You have to get comfortable playing in a phone booth sometimes. Sitting in the pocket, pressure right in your face, guys coming at you, guys hitting you. You got to get comfortable with that because that stands out big time. And if they are confident that we have a quarterback who could sit in there, throw and take hits and complete the ball, not only does it stand up to a college coach, that will move you up that depth chart because they know you got it. You got it when the pads come on and when it is most important. Guys, a freaking seven on seven, like anybody could take the ball from a tee, take a one step drop and sit there and take a million hitches and throw. And everybody sees the seven on seven clips. You get the foam pit crap and like everybody thinks, oh, that's real. It's not real football, guys. Unless you make it real football, obviously, this is real football. Standing in there, letting the pocket get in your face, and being able to hang in there, maybe take a shot or two and deliver a shot downfield, an accurate shot downfield. That's what the position's about, and that's what a lot of starters have in common that a lot of backups, third-string guys don't have. They feel that pressure, they get out of there. They feel that pressure, they try to take off and run. You feel that pressure, let's stay in there if we can, and let's deliver a shot. When you get out, you're going to know when it's time to get out of there, right? You will know when it is time to get out of that pocket when you got a guy unblocked trying to take your head off. But if you, you could stay in there, get comfortable in that phone booth, again, it comes from reps, comes from practice reps. Something that I, I do with my quarterback sometimes is I will literally, like, I'll act as the center, I'll snap them the ball and I'll just walk at them. Like I'll literally just make it uncomfortable and just stand in front of them. So they get used to delivering throws with a guy right in their face. But again, it doesn't need to be like they're getting hit, just their offensive lineman right in their face. How do you deal when you're in that phone booth? And that is a big thing that separates a lot of starters from a lot of backups. Can you hang in there? Can you throw when things get uncomfortable? All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to learn how you can read defenses, check out that very first link in the description below. We get 500 plus videos exactly like this one, breaking down different offensive plays, weaknesses against defenses, the work. So again, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. I'll see you guys next time.